Dear Montessori colleagues and friends all over the world, hello and welcome. This is Montessori Institute Prague podcast, Montessori love stories that need to be told. My name is Mirka, I'm the host of this podcast, and I'm really excited that you're listening to us right now, and I really hope you're going to enjoy this. Hello, Elina. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode of the Montessori Institute Prague Talks podcast. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Mirka. My guest here today is Elina Rautasalo. And before we dive into the conversation, I just want to uh, say one more time. Again, I say at the beginning of each podcast that uh, this podcast is called Montessori Stories That Want to Be Told or That Need to Be Told. Montessori love stories. And the idea is that uh, there are so many amazing, inspiring people out there, Montessorians, who have done really wonderful and great things for the world, that we really need to start capturing these stories and start listening to these people because they have many amazing lessons that they have learned, that they can share with us. And just hearing about their story is so inspiring and encouraging for people who listen. So This is why I decided to do this and I uh, invite guests based on my relationship with them because we're also mapping out the story of Montessori Institute Prague and Elena who um, took the time to come today, thank you Elena for that, is a, a, she's a three to six AMI trainer uh, who now lives in Prague and I'm sure we'll touch upon that but she's also a great friend. Um, We as a training center are growing thanks to the support of people who have lots of Montessori expertise and who can come and help us. And Elena not only did that and started doing a three to six diploma course and orientation courses with us, she also moved to Prague for this work. And I'm sure you will, might want to share about that a little bit. Yes. So, so welcome, Elena. And uh, would you please say a few words about yourself? My first question always is, It's a little bit tricky because it's, you know, but uh, it starts the conversation flowing. So who are you? Please introduce yourself. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's, it's like a major existential question. <laughs> so how to, yesterday, I, I have to say yesterday, we did some definition stages with the students and we just thought of various definitions for things. So now, it's, <laughs> how, how shall one define oneself? Mm. Yes. Well, you know, um, I, and first I have to commend you. You say my name so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So I am um, Elena and like all human beings, of course, you know, we are many, many things. But the reason why I am here uh, at this podcast is that I am, like you said, uh, AMI three to six uh, trainer but that is not how i started and maybe a little bit more of who i am gets revealed when we um, when we yeah. continue when we continue to talk you know it's really interesting how you reflect on the question because everybody whom i have uh, interviewed up until now say that when I let them know that this will be the, the first question. They start thinking about their life and reflecting about their life. And it really helps. People have commented and said, it. well, I, you know, it really helped me to sit down and pause and think about things and reflect. And s several people said, I have an amazing, amazing story to tell. And thank you for helping me see that. So uh, it's, uh, I don't mean to be mean when I ask the question, but no. um, yeah. So, no, but it, it's 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 one of those things, isn't it? That they are kind of multi-dimensional, and we can look at ourselves, you know, uh, you know, from a personal point of view, from a professional point of view, in a social context. You know, there's so many aspects to unravel. Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, in this podcast, I always ask people three. It's like a three-part question. First is please tell me a little bit about your journey before Montessori. Then please tell me about how you first heard about Montessori. And then please tell me about how Montessori changed your life and what happened after that. So 
I'm just gonna like ask all three right now and I'll let you say what comes to your heart. Yes. Okay, so before I came to Montessori, uh, I think one of my life's challenges was that I have had always multiple interests. And so it made, you know, um, choosing a career path sometimes tricky because I felt that if I do this, I have to give up that. At one point, I was convinced that I shall become a lawyer. Mm. But, <laughs> I but, didn't know that. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, um, yeah. I thought but, you wanted um, to be a musician because I know you come from a musical family, right? Yes, yes. So, yes, indeed. So music has always been and continues to be one of my great loves. And uh, that was one of those big decisions at one point, you know, will music become my profession uh, or not? But um, it was in the 80s that then I um, applied to the University of Helsinki, Finland, where I am originally from. And uh, I started studying um, education in order to become a teacher. And I also um, studied uh, musicology. But then I somehow was put in touch with um, um, student teachers. And I also took a little, um, how shall I call it? It wasn't exactly a diversion, but I also became the general secretary for the Student Teacher Association uh, mm -hmm. in Finland. And um, that was very interesting work. But during my studies at the university, and maybe many of the uh, people listening to this uh, or watching this podcast know about Finnish education, and it has typically a very good reputation. Yeah. But nowhere is perfect. <laughs> I <have to> say. <laughs> but um, although, you know, our educational system generally is very um, child centered and, uh, you know, and the studies also, mm. I felt all the time that, you know, something is missing. This isn't quite it. And then it kind of led to my discovery about Montessori. It didn't happen through the studies. We have a family friend who is a pianist and a conductor, and we ended up talking about, you know, education and life. And then he said, you know, uh, my son goes to a Montessori school in Germany. And he said that, Elena, maybe Montessori is something that you would like to look into. And that's exactly what I did. And it sounded interesting. And those days we didn't have a training center, AMI training center in Finland. Now there is. And uh, I called the Finnish Montessori Society. And then they said that, you know, the place to go is um, what was then known as uh, the Maria Montessori Training Organization, currently Maria Montessori Institute, the MMI, um, in London. So that's what I then decided to do. Wow. Yeah, and I packed, I, I still remember it was September 1992. <laughs> so it's 30 years ago. And I still remember I packed this enormous suitcase and my violin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my violin traveled Just to me. make sure. <laughs> yes, yes. But that's and a big decision, Elena. How do you, you know, you were young at that time. Have you done a lot of travels before that? Or did you have, in a, you know, family, some other family members were so courageous to get up and go wherever the wind kind of, well, you know, it's a big thing to do, to move from one country to another. It, it was, uh, I wasn't that young, you know, I, I wasn't that young, but uh, I guess, you know, yes, my, my father was a musician and he traveled always a lot. So, you know, traveling was, kind of, I guess, part of, yes. part of okay. mm -hmm. something we have got accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but little did I know that when I packed my suitcase, it would never really return to Finland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. That's also amazing. We set out on a journey and we think it's going to end in some way and then it ends in a completely different way. Wow. 
Yes. So, so you came to London. Yes. And you started. And, yes. And, yeah. Yeah. And then, then I uh, was a student there. And uh, after I was offered, after I finished my uh, training, I was offered a job in a bilingual um, Montessori school. And I thought, what a great opportunity. So why not? you know, take that job. And I worked at that school for a few years. And then the training center asked me to come and work for, uh, school. for, for them. Actually, first yeah. I did a little bit of administration and then I started actually, and that kind of led to another. Then I was being trained gradually as a lecturer and then I continued to work with the children and so these things um, working with adults and children very much happened hand in hand. So I'd like to stay a little bit uh, in the moment when you were in training because now you are a trainer yourself and it's really interesting to think about what was that experience for you like when you were a student. So please share who was your trainer and also it's like you come to London and how did you find your flat? How was it to step out in the door of the training center for the first time? Do you have some memories of that? Oh, yes. Yes, I remember that I first rang the wrong doorbell, first of all. I rang the <laughs> children's house doorbell when I first went to visit. And some very kind lady said that the training center door is upstairs. <laughs> but I must say that I'm extremely, the training center isn't anymore at that building because they made more space for children and the training was taken elsewhere but it was in a lovely area in a very leafy part of uh london uh, and i managed to find accommodation very near the training center also in a leafy part of london you know it was a flat share so we mm -hmm. were many people you know sharing the the flat uh but it was a walking distance so and it was a lovely walk so I, I must say that I enjoyed very much you know every day uh, that walk from from uh, from my residence to the training center and then you walk into the door of the training center for the first day of your course do you still mm -hmm. remember what was the atmosphere how did you feel or something like that it was extremely welcoming and we have a, a, a well there was a picture of a Maria Montessori a painting of Maria Montessori in the entry hall, you know, and uh, so immediately you got that feeling, you know, it, it's an old Victorian building. And uh, yeah, I'm very fond of that building, I have to say, mm. to this day. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember what we now also do with our students, you know, I remember we all uh, one at a time, we got up and we introduced ourselves and said where we come from. And it was so fascinating again to see the amazing uh, range of people and uh, you know where they came came from you know all over the world so it was yeah. a very rich uh, and you're reminding me i had a conversation with uh, hanak shepard who is your uh, st former student and our graduate. And I, she and I have talked about this, like when you walk into the training center for the first time and you sit in for the first lesson kind of feeling. And she shared exactly what you just said, like that it was such a wonderful experience because there were people from all over the world. And she said, I was so scared. I'm going back to learning. And I had all these, you know, pre, pre assumptions about how it's gonna be because for, you know, from what school looked like by way back when she was in school, and that it just completely changed her perspective on how education can be conducted and and all of that. So she had she described uh, exactly the same uh, feeling of being so welcome and of the group being international and being amazed that yes, I'm doing this for myself. I'm here, ready to take my diploma course. So, yes. And, and, your and your trainer was? Yes, and you know, we were on the first day, we already met, you know, certain people. <laughs> um, we also had, I remember there were some past students also at the opening uh, mm -hmm. event, and then the trainers and a representative from Montessori Society. So we had um, 
uh, actually very fortunate situation in uh, London that we had more than one person. So we had at the time there was uh, Lynn Lawrence, uh, who is now the executive director of AMI, and then also Hila Patel. So I had wow. the pleasure uh, and priv privilege of having uh, both of these ladies and also we had many other uh, lecturers so it was a very again rich fabric of people sharing their knowledge actually so from day one you had this um understanding of what the ami community is like and what it's offering and i like that idea of inviting former students for day one i think maybe yes. was, yeah Yes, because I have to tell you that after the introduction and the speeches, then we did something very British, which was we went downstairs for a lovely cup of tea. And that's where we then also had a chance to, you know, mingle with one another uh, and have conversations, you know, before the actual uh, work day happened. So this was actually an afternoon and then the coursework happened. You know, we started yeah. uh, on another day. I like that a lot. We should adopt this for the diploma course that's starting. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lovely, lovely little activity and how to make people welcome and at the same yeah. time give them the understanding they're becoming part of something much bigger. Yes. And yeah, that's great. Yes. Yes. Okay. In a way, you know, as you say, there's it's lovely because there's kind of the history, the further history, the more near past and then the current and the future Montessorian. So, yeah. Amazing. Okay, so now you are in the diploma course and or you're trained, you, you got your diploma and you started working for the one of the MMI schools and then how the story evolves after that. Yes, so then, yeah, then it evolved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's it's really fascinating. You know, sometimes people ask this that, you know, did you you know decide to become a trainer and i can really say that it's something that kind of happened very organic organically you know i never set that as a goal or anything and i remember so you know so gradually i started uh, lecturing but obviously i was trained to be a lecturer mm -hmm. uh you know uh, mm -hmm. and i was simultaneously we those days we organized evening courses so i also in parallel I worked with the children still in the morning. So I sometimes laugh that I had very long days then, but I was younger than now. So maybe I could handle it better. But yeah, so it was quite interesting because I had in a way feet uh, in both camps, you know, still with the children, but on the other hand with uh, adults. That must have been really encouraging for you to see that, you know, what you're learning in the class, what you're learning from children and from the work with them, you can share and other people and student, students can benefit from it, right? Yes, and also vice versa, that I felt that continuously, you know, having these, you know, pedagogical discussions and, uh, you know, presenting materials and discussing the theory, it also fed. Mm into the classroom so it was a very kind of virtuous uh, circle if you like yeah. yeah but do you have some fond memories of the children that you worked with oh many and so you know sometimes uh, it's, it's like you know if i close my eyes i can absolutely transport myself back in time and you know and you know i must say that uh one one uh very fun part living in the same area where the children's house and the training center was and sometimes it was maybe a little bit of challenging part because you know i felt that my private life isn't always private you know i'm walking <laughs> down the street and somebody says elena elena hello <laughs> and then sometimes children said but why are you here you need to be at school <laughs> it's like i was in the wrong place because they bumped into you on the street and they yes. didn't understand they maybe felt that you live at the school and you're yes it's so funny. yes and I, I must say maybe i will share i mean there could be many stories but i will share one you know uh, uh, well it's a long story or cut the long story short so <clears throat> there was some publicity for montessori pedagogy um you know 
was it like maybe five seven years ago or no maybe even more than that mm -hmm. and um uh, and the, montessori was written a lot in the papers in the uk at the time and then the doorbell at the training center rang and there was a boy who had been a child in the children's house like mid mid in the mid 90s and he insisted that he wanted to be in the photograph with a colleague of mine and I who work together and the pink tower. And and then, you know what, he said something that it's still, I find it so moving. He said, you know, this is the place where I have been the happiest. Mm. And, you know, he, he was a student, um, uh, studied English at university. So he was a university student, but he, he somehow really captured his it's, yeah experience. This is, these stories like when we start or i'm not a, an educator myself but when our students then in the future teachers uh, have enough of experience long enough that they actually start seeing or meeting their their children becoming grown-ups i think that's when you see the change you have made in their lives yes. and it's uh, such a confirmation of uh, of the purpose of this work right it is yeah. it is and you know we had some uh, years ago also there in london uh, i think was it the 60th anniversary you know everything now has become a little bit of a blur in terms of years but of the schools uh, of the training center and we had many uh, children or young adults who who came back and it was absolutely lovely to see many of them you know like 20 something wow. years later yeah well i won't live to see the 60th anniversary of our school <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i do hope that a lot of those uh, children who will be adults and parents themselves will come and <laughs> and celebrate with whoever is going to be leading yeah. the school at that time yes Okay, so now let's talk about your journey. You've, you know, you've becoming a trainer and continuing to work at uh, Maria Montessori Institute London. Mm -hmm. Just, is there anything like that comes to mind that you'd like to share about that period of time for you? Yes, it was, um, you know, we were in some ways very fortunate in London because we had two trainers there and, uh, and other very experienced uh um practitioners but um and hila uh, patel is rather a, a famous montessorian yes right? and you know I'm, i must say that you know we have a lot of papers that we need to write for the training of trainers program and and um hila patel always one of her emails always to us and i was also very lucky that there were a few of us um that were in the training of trainers program at the same time so we had also each other so mm -hmm. we weren't you know isolated or alone and i can really say that that was uh, invaluable but um she always said elena have you pressed the send button <laughs> <laughs> oh, to send an essay yes you mean yes send them oh to, that's lovely to send them to be assessed <laughs> oh yes that we should ask some of our tot's here have you press the send button we have two trainers in training here now so that's yes, yes. <laughs> so, that's can you, yeah can you share how so what does it take to become a trainer i think maybe a lot of people don't know that so and i just thought of the question right Would you well, like, yeah <laughs> well uh <laughs> that's a devilish like <laughs> I, I think it has it has evolved a little bit but you know uh, you will um write I should know this number now, but over 20 essays of the similar, uh, the same their theory topics, principally that students write for the diploma course, but obviously they are much deeper, deeper than and uh, wider than uh, the student essays. And then uh, also we um, produce what we call trainers albums. So you know, the theoretical work and then the practical application work goes very much hand in hand. And 
again, what I would really like to uh, share, and <clears throat> it's one aspect that I very much value in the training that uh, I had, was that Montessori wasn't a formula. It wasn't something that you do in a particular way. We were always encouraged. Yes, we have principles, but <laughs> and that's absolutely important. You know, we need to understand the pedagogy. We need to understand the child. But we were always encouraged to think and also think about what is important about the way we deliver. So it's not the content. Mm. The content isn't the only important mm -hmm. thing. That's what I'm trying to say. That also, you know, how we deliver. Uh, yes, because matters. often people think there's a prescribed way of how to present, the, how to use the material and how to present it to the child. And but what I hear you saying is that what's more important is to think about how this helps the child and yes and as a trainer how you know how how to deliver the content to the students so you know it's not just again that we and this is i i think by the way a fundamental thing that just like we believe that the children you know <laughs> develop and construct their own knowledge so do the students yeah yes so and it takes how, how what, what do, do you have to accomplish to apply for the trainers of training program and then how long does it take to become a trainer that's a, how long is a piece of string <laughs> <laughs> very long <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yes there's if anyone is interested you can actually look at ami's uh, website uh, there's a detail there but in a nutshell um, uh, one has to have a um, degree a minimum of um, three years of uh, sorry five years sorry sorry five years of experience with children but three years I think it is still that directing uh, one class mm -hmm. minimum of five years and then uh, there will be a uh, obviously um, an application and a nice little discussion i.e interview but it's mm -hmm. a discussion and then there will be also school visit so somebody uh, appointed by ami will come and observe the applicant in action mm -hmm. and how long it takes it varies mm -hmm. a lot <laughs> <laughs> but there's a minimum of what you have to do right okay. yes ab absolutely i mean i i i think five five years used to be kind of standard but many people go a little bit mm -hmm. further than so you 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 uh you are present outside of writing essays and creating your own trainer's album and all the other work that you have to do and all the reading and spiritual preparation you work alongside a trainer yes then then uh yes so then during the course uh, the trainee has to attend to uh, all the lectures um theoretical and practical uh, given the course and during the course and then gradually gradually they begin to also um, present Help. materials and lecture but that happens uh, over time yeah there's now a uh, different sort of slightly different options for the roots mm -hmm. to become a trainer mm -hmm. but generally uh from what i know it takes you you have to do a minimum of two trainings help be, being a trainer in training and then you can either do some seminars or you do a third training so third training uh, yes training. and ideally somewhere else and um, you know i so that one gets to see another a trainer and another training center and then the seminar format which i didn't do i did mm -hmm. the old-fashioned way but i my some of my colleagues in london did do the seminar format and uh, uh again what was wonderful is that they got to meet other uh trainers in training and 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 then it's you know kind of there's already a community of people that you know so you don't enter uh the scene you know 
empty, em, in a way, empty and uh, and you know people. So that's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, so what I was uh, what I was saying that what is nice about the seminar format that and I didn't do it that way, you know, I I did the old fashioned way. I um, went to another training center in another continent, but um, uh, my colleagues who did it, they it's wonderful because they met other trainers in training and, you know, when they um, they already know people then. So, you know, when you are a new trainer, you don't feel like, oh, I don't know anyone. So you are already kind of part of the community. Uh, so, yes, like you mentioned earlier, that um, people can um, do two trainings with one uh, uh, trainer mm -hmm. and then either the seminar format or go to some other training center. And I uh, went to another training center in another with uh, in another continent so i did it what might we might say the old-fashioned way but then some of my colleagues you know who did the seminar format they said that it was so wonderful because they already got to meet other trainers mm -hmm. in training so then you know entering the trainer community you already have colleagues and you have had numerous discussions and wow so who did, who was your other second trainer? You did you worked with Lynn Lawrence, and then who was your and Hila then Patel? The, and in London, I had uh, also Hila Patel. Mm -hmm. But then I went to um, uh, Thailand, and mm -hmm. there I had uh, Rita Zina uh, for one part, and then uh, Ulla Wikefeld uh, for oh, the yes. other. And ah, okay, yes. Okay, so there's uh, there was Hila did some special work uh, in that training center related to observation, and you were present when she did that, right? You were part, you partook on that. Can you mm -hmm. say a word about that? Yes, I mean, uh, one of the key <laughs> key qualities uh, or key responsibilities of the practitioner is observation, and as you know, Montessori. Uh, approach actually was founded on observation. You know, Maria Montessori did not invent anything. She formulated her ideas uh, and principles after decades of decades of observing uh, children. Yes, so uh, it's an, still an integral part of the training course. You know, so it's not something that. Uh, you know, we, we can't forget yes. <laughs> and we don't yeah. during the training. And, you know, we uh, look at the principles of observation, you know, so what should the observer consider, but also to develop in ourselves the capacity and to desire to observe so that it really informs our practice and uh, this is one of the many things that <laughs> I, I think um, I'm very passionate about because again sometimes there's this danger that the pedagogy becomes like a manual you know or a tick list of presentations you know have done that tick have done that oh in my album this is the next but if we are truly to serve the child and respond we need to first observe and then we can see where what to offer to the child mm -hmm. and um, you know rather than doing it mechanically yes so in the in your diploma course uh, you teach students how to observe and what to observe and the principle of observation and why and yes. then do they have a chance to actually try it out as part of the diploma course? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So um, we have uh, multiple different observation uh, tasks and it builds um, gradually. You know, AMI sees uh, this uh, as an extremely important element of the course. And there's therefore uh, the official requirement is a minimum of 90 hours of observation of children in Montessori settings. Yes, and uh, I will add that in the setting has to be a classroom led by an AMI three to six trained teacher. So well, that when it uh, when it's not 
time that it doesn't allow, right? But ideally, that's, uh, that's ideally, what we want yes. our students to do. Yeah. Yes, ideally. Now, uh, there are now some uh, accommodations to make this, uh, yeah. because you can still, uh, and I think it's interesting that we can learn a lot about children and observation in a way, mm -hmm. regardless of the setting. But of course, it's also very important that students on courses get experience in uh, Montessori environments where the principles are really, you know, adhered to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's really, I think this may be really uh, important to mention that uh, there's their AMI has shown so much flexibility uh, and in innovative thinking in a way throughout these past few years when it was COVID and now the war in Ukraine that we really are looking for ways to allow students who are in circumstances that don't allow to observe in a classroom with an AMI training street teacher to still learn how to do observation and yeah so that's i think that's really wonderful and yes. yeah yeah yes and uh, i must say that uh, on, on on that note you know um uh, sometimes people also ask that do you miss children now that you work with adults and of course the answer is yes and uh, uh i have to say that i still feel very very happy now that you know the pandemic is kind of more oh, yeah. or less over that uh, I have been able to again to visit uh, classrooms and observe and see the children and it's just yes and, and I was just going to say that you completely you like took the thought out of my mind oh. because I was going to mention that uh, so outside of being a, a trainer at uh, in Prague uh, for a three to six diploma course you also train elsewhere so please mention that but you also are able to go to or you go to schools for uh, supervision visits or so please share a word about that and uh, if anybody wants to uh, know more about uh, your service to the community in this way they can contact you or Montessori Institute Prague and we can always make the connection uh, if, if there's a school who would love yes. to go also parents yes. talks so please share yes. a little bit about that okay yes thank yes thank you yeah so I, I think um, you know one of the most wonderful aspects of this work uh, becoming a trainer is that it has enabled me to travel and see Montessori pedagogy applied um, in various corners of the world. You know, I have um, directed um, diploma courses in Thailand and uh, then I've done uh, assistance course in Vietnam and um, uh, and then but primarily my work uh, currently is actually in Europe so yes in Prague and currently I train um, here also in the Netherlands where I am at the moment in the beautiful city of Delft where the AMI AGM will be this year by yes. the way yes and people if you want to sign up you better do it now because we have signed up 16 people from Prague today. <laughs> and I'm getting a message from AMI that, wow, our registrations are going to be closed soon. So you right. better, yes, okay. so if you want to go to the annual general meeting of AMI, which is a wonderful three day event uh, in Amsterdam. Oh, not in Amsterdam anymore, in Netherlands, in Delft where members of AMI meet, they find out about what has been done in the past year, they connect with other Montessorians, there are a lot of trainers who come to the meeting as well, and there's always a wonderful program so you can learn something, you become, you're part of the community, sign up, the information is on the AMI website, um, and we'd be happy to see you, and we'll have the biggest ever group from the Czech Republic present there, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so... Join, right. join us and join Elena is going as well and all, all of our trainers in fact are going okay great yeah. yes and then um I used to work in uh, Switzerland but because of the pandemic kind of messed up schedules and so forth so I'm no more uh physically working there I'm, I'm doing some online uh, orientation courses yes but then um which is very exciting there's also um, a new training center in Portugal and that training isn't hasn't started yet but it will in the course of 20 
2023. This is the year where we are. Yes. Yes. So I was just saying that if people want to find out about these train other training centers where you train, they can go to the AMI, my website. There's a section for training, and then they can search by country. And you know, you're very welcome, all of you who are listening to us today, to check the schedules uh, which works better for you, uh, because this is an amazing diploma course. And in fact, I'm when I'm talking with you, Elena, I just every time I talk to you, I just really want to sign up for your course. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I know. No, one day. Okay, I will finish the first one I started, and then three to six is coming because it's. Uh, it's part, it's one of the reasons why we have established Montessori Institute Prague, because we deeply and sincerely, wholeheartedly believe in the principles of Montessori education, and we want to bring it to all children of the world. So, mm -hmm. so let's, let's start wrapping up, but uh, maybe we could wrap up around the story between you and Montessori Institute Prague. Yes, <laughs> yes happy, happily. Yeah, I was supposed to mention something about, was I supposed to talk, the, then we had the cut, was I supposed to talk about the mentoring a little bit? Oh, yes, that's right. And let's, let's talk about the mentoring as well. So let's yes. go back to so, the mentoring. And then let's talk about how you first heard about MIP. Maybe. Yes, well, it was actually, Mirka, it was the AGM. It was one AGM. And, uh, and uh, those days, you know, uh, before the uh, elementary the six to 12 course, students had to take the foundation course. And I can't remember whether it was Lynn Lawrence or somebody kind of put us together. I think it, I I think it was her. Lynn. She's very, this is one of the most amazing things about Lynn. That is, she connects people, exactly the right people that need to be connected. So she connected the two. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so it was 2014. So we have a few more years before we will have our 10 year anniversary. But yeah, it was 2014 and I came, uh, it was a summer, I think it was eight weeks or was it, I, I can't remember now, but it was, it was a lovely uh, summer and um, the training center was still in the um, in our school. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the school building and uh, yeah, it was a lovely summer and then it kind of led to more work together. I came to do assistance courses there. And then we started, you had had um, two, I think three to six trainings with uh, Maria Roth before I came. And then was it 2015, 16, I think was the next, or the, my first three to six training with- um, We continued together, yes. Okay. Yes, it's actually I, I, I like to remember those times when the training was still in the school building because we, you know, we had children part of our everyday lives and only later when we organized the Congress in 2017, we had to move out because there was too much going, the school grew and there was, we, as with Maria Montessori Institute London, we wanted to make more space for the children, so we took, uh, took we separated the training center and it became its own entity and found its own space and so we now have, we are now starting a sixth three to six diploma course uh, at Montessori Institute Prague. And um, just to mention, of course, I have to mention this, that if, if any of you want to join, you still can. Uh, the, on, the first three weeks will be given online. And the, the, we said what, March 6th is the first day, I think it's Monday um <laughs> that we start. But anyway, it's on our website if I don't remember the date correctly. But the important thing is, it's coming up very soon. So if you're listening to us and you're thinking you want to do a diploma course in Prague and with Elena, with this amazing person that I have had the pleasure and honor to talk for this last one hour, uh, you know where to find us. Yes. But, but please do mention about the mentoring as well because people yes. are interested. Yes, and, uh, yes, and I must say that that's something that, um, it, it's so wonderful, you know, to go and visit uh, the schools because then, you know, it keeps one's pulse on the practice and um, and to again have a dialogue uh, and discussion with the with the teachers and um, yeah, and then you know this is like a continuity. So we go and visit again, and you know, then it's it's just. Yes, very, very nice. 
it's a long-term relationship that helps schools grow right because so uh, um it's to get feedback from somebody who has done this for so many years uh, yeah. is very important and to have the space to talk through things and come back to the core principles we are also uh hoping to give together a three to six refresher ami refresher in the spring so that's sort of um, how all the dots connect and it's not just about taking a diploma course and then saying goodbye going to the classroom and not, not ever showing up again yes we we have lots of support that we can provide you can yes. provide as a trainer uh two people who become practitioners after the diploma course yes. which is really and amazing it it is and uh, i must say that that's really again the fact that you know when one graduates from the course you know of course it's an important chapter but it's actually <laughs> uh, it's uh, early days and you know even when one is an experienced practitioner we never stop learning and developing and same i can say as a trainer you know some hopefully we know a lot but you know sometimes it also happens that the more we know we realize how little we know in a way you know there's it's just endless and that's what i think what is the beauty of this pedagogy that it's not stagnant you know and what the students on the course bring into it is invaluable but also the practitioners thank you let's wrap up uh and i have uh, is there something that uh, you have learned like what and i mean this is a difficult question you know is, do you have a motto that you go by or is there one lesson that you have learned that you'd like to share with people or is there a quote that comes to mind like something nice that because people who are listening to us they're coming to listen to your story to learn from you and you have shared so much that they can learn from in this in this uh, conversation but is there something else or you know just to, to add what yes Hmm. Yeah, I, I really hope that, you know, when we think about Montessori pedagogy, fundamentally, it is about human development. And, you know, Montessori says that the school is both for the child and the adult. And uh, I mm. think <laughs> that's what this work brings us, that we, we have a continuous opportunity to um, to discover and have revelations and to share and to build um, community. And Thank you. yes, and maybe I do want to say this that, you know, children really deserve, and maybe this is the thing that it's still in today's society. Montessori said that, you know, child is like the forgotten citizen. And <laughs> in many ways, the child still is and I, I really hope that uh, childhood and you know early childhood and childhood and from then on that gets the gravity that it deserves yeah. and and I have to say that it, it is a great responsibility and at the same time privilege to be able to do work that is meaningful isn't it Yes, so much. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's. I mean, it's so meaningful that sometimes we forget to rest, <laughs> <laughs> and we have to. And as you said, the school is there for the child and for the adult, and really, it is a huge responsibility mm -hmm. uh, that we have. So, thank you for the work you do to support all the adults who we want to become guides, and mm -hmm. that you do. To support adults who became guides and who need continual support. Thank you so much, Elena, for taking Thank you. the time today. Thank you, Mirka. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, and I will see you at the AGM. <laughs> maybe even before. Yes, maybe I even before. Come, I shall come home to Prague uh, at the end of this week. Oh, okay. So we can make a plan. Yes, <laughs> Thank absolutely. You. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Dear colleagues and friends, thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this inspiring Montessori story. I hope it encouraged you. I hope you learned something from it. 
and I hope that you realize that you are not alone on your Montessori journey. I'm looking forward to speaking with my next guest. And as we say in Czech language, naslyšeno in two weeks. Yours with love, Mirka from Montessori Institute Prague.